Hello everyone, welcome to Confident Chemistry. Today I'm going to be talking about drawing molecules using the skeletal structure or the bond line structure. You're going to learn all about how to read them, how to write them, and why organic chemists love to use them. Feel free to take your own notes along with me or visit my website at confidentchemistry.com if you'd like to download your own copy of my notes template for today's lesson. First, let's talk about why organic chemists like to draw molecules using skeletal structures. There are many ways to draw organic molecules and you've probably already come across lots of them in your general chemistry courses. Let's look at the molecule 2-propanol and compare some of the different ways it can be represented. The molecular formula is easy to write, but all it tells us is how many of each atom is present. C3H8O can represent 2-propanol, but it could also represent any other isomer that fits this formula. It doesn't give us enough information. The condensed structural formula is also pretty simple to write out. It contains some structural information. We can understand that these CH3s in parentheses are attached to the central carbon and that there's also an OH group there. However, once molecules start getting large with more branching, rings, and functional groups, these kinds of formulas aren't great for immediately knowing what a molecule looks like. You've probably spent a lot of time learning how to draw Lewis structures. They contain a lot of information about how the molecule is put together. Here as I draw it, you can see all of the bonds and exactly how they are arranged. But even for a small molecule like 2-propanol, it's taking me some time to draw out. This structure isn't ideal for studying big molecules or entire reactions because it would take forever to draw, not to mention waste a lot of paper. What we could really use is a practical, quick way to draw molecules where we can clearly understand the structure and the bonding. This brings us to the skeletal structure. You might also see this called the bond line structure or bond line drawings. For this type of drawing, carbon atoms are represented by points on a line and only the functional groups like the OH group here are added to the carbon skeleton. It is quick to draw, it's very clear and easy to read, and it contains all the information we need about the atoms in the molecule and how they're connected. So how do we learn to read these skeletal structures and get skilled at drawing them? Let's look at a few examples of skeletal structures and dig out all the information that they contain. The first molecule has a carbon skeleton and an amino functional group. Each of these points on the line represents one carbon atom. These singly bonded carbons are drawn in a zigzag pattern to represent their tetrahedral geometry. In these drawings, all of the hydrogens attached to the carbon atoms are left out. We call these implicit hydrogens. There are three implicit hydrogens on the end carbon because it only has one other bond. The rest of the carbon atoms have two implicit hydrogens. I drew the first ones out with the wedges and dashes to show you the tetra tetrahedral sp3 geometry, but the rest I'm just going to draw in quickly. Finally, don't forget the amino group, NH2. We always include the atom labels for atoms that aren't carbon, and we also draw in the hydrogen atoms if they're attached to an atom that isn't carbon. Next, let's look at this alkene. The four points on the line represent four carbon atoms, and we still use the zigzag geometry for double bonds to show the trigonal planar geometry. I'll draw in each of the three implicit hydrogens on these single bonded carbons on the ends. On each of the double bonded carbons here, there is only one implicit hydrogen missing because each carbon already had three bonds. This alkyne also has four carbon atoms. The points on the line are harder to spot, but we need to draw it this way since triply bonded carbons are sp hybridized and they have a linear geometry. Just like the last example, the outer carbons have three implicit hydrogens, but the triply bonded carbons have none. They already had four bonds each. Last, let's interpret this ring compound. There are six carbon atoms forming a ring, one for each of these points. The carbon atom with the ketone functional group attached has no implicit hydrogens because it already has four bonds. These two doubly bonded carbons have one implicit hydrogen each, and the rest of the carbon atoms have two implicit hydrogens. Because these carbon atoms are tetrahedral, the hydrogens point above and below the plane of the ring, just like I showed on the bottom carbon using the wedged and dashed bonds. 
I hope these examples have helped you learn a little bit about how to read and draw skeletal structures or bond line drawings. Let's do a couple of practice problems just to make sure that we solidify what we've learned today. Feel free to pause the video if you want to do the problem before me, or just keep watching and do it along with me. Practice problem number one. Draw the skeletal structure corresponding to this great big Lewis structure here. So this is basically just the reverse of what we were doing in the examples before. We'll start with these six carbons that form the ring, and we won't include any of those hydrogens. We're gonna leave them implicit, but we will draw in these three double bonds. And next we'll draw the single bond to this carbon off of the ring. We won't include the hydrogens attached to it, they're implicit. And then we'll draw a zigzag bond to the nitrogen atom. And then lastly, we're just going to draw single bonds to the three carbons that are off the nitrogen, and we're going to leave off their hydrogens. And lastly, just this positive charge on the nitrogen atom. If you don't know what that little positive charge means, stay tuned for my next video where I'm going to discuss formal charges on organic molecules. Problem number two, draw the skeletal structure for 1-bromo-3-methylpentane. Okay, so this time we're going from a name to a drawing, and if you don't know how to name compounds, hopefully I'll have a video on that soon. What we need to know here is that the pentane part of this name means that there are five carbons in a chain. So we're going to draw those out in the zigzag pattern. I'm going to number them, one, two, three, four, and five, just to make it easier to see here. And next, we're going to add our one bromo substituent. So on the first carbon, we have a bromine atom, and we write it out because it's a functional group. And then on the third carbon, we have a methyl group, and we don't show the hydrogens on it. Problem number three. How many carbon atoms are in this great big molecule here, and can we draw in all of the implicit hydrogen atoms? So this is just making sure that we can identify properly carbon atoms and the implicit hydrogens on a skeletal structure, and it's super important once we get into learning reactions. So right now I'm just counting each and every one of these carbons by pointing at it. And if you were counting along with me, you'd see that there are 18 carbons in this structure. So now I'm just going to go around. I'm going to count how many bonds each carbon already has so that I know how many implicit hydrogens to add to the structure. This is the trickiest one. It's easy to forget just the one lone implicit hydrogen. Knowing where these are is super important once you get into reactions, because it's often hydrogen atoms that participate in the reactions, and you need to draw them in. Thanks guys for studying with me today. Make sure you give this video a like if it was helpful for you, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I've got lots more videos upcoming to help you become more confident in chemistry. See you later.